everybody! Welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. Well, today is a very exciting day. In this greenhouse here, we have planted our sweet potatoes, and it's the first year we've ever planted sweet potatoes in a giant raised bed garden inside of a greenhouse. In the past, we've had terrible luck growing sweet potatoes, especially in the ground, because our ground is so hard. It's like hard clay. And not only can the sweet potatoes not really grow very well in there, it is nearly impossible for us to harvest them. Normally over the summer, this greenhouse behind us would sit empty because it just gets too hot in there for most things. But it got us thinking in the spring that, you know, hot and humid over the summer is perfect for sweet potatoes. So that's why we decided to try planting them in this greenhouse this, this summer. And if the vines are any indication of how things are going, I think it's gonna be a great harvest, but we're not gonna know till we get inside, so let's go inside. Well, you guys, can you believe how big these sweet potato vines have gotten? This started out as about 40 sweet potato slips that we started last winter. We actually just went to our local health food store, bought some organic sweet potatoes, and then started these slips from those sweet potatoes. We do have a video about how to start sweet potato slips if you wanna take a look at that. But look at these vines. Um, it has been 125 days since we planted these in the ground, which is actually about a week longer than we probably should have waited, but we wanted to wait until the weather started to cool down and today's gonna to be the perfect day to start harvesting these. Now, for those of you who may be new to our channel, I'll just review a little bit about exactly our setup here. Uh, this greenhouse is 16 feet wide by 32 feet long to give you some idea of where we are. And then the, we actually have a raised bed in here that you can't really see right now, but it is six feet wide by 22 feet long. So that is what we're growing in is this big raised bed. We did this because like Sarah said earlier, the, our ground here gets so hard. By, raise, by doing them in this raised bed, uh, we have much looser soil. We have, can control the soil conditions a lot more. Now we've also had drip irrigation running in here. We have four rows of drip tape irrigation running in this raised bed. We've had those going off every three days for two hours at a time. And we've had that going all summer long on a timer, which um, I really think is part of the reason these have grown so well. Now we did turn the irrigation off about a week ago to hopefully give things a little bit time to dry out before we start digging all of these up. But with, uh, as much as these vines have covered everything, the soil could still be pretty wet underneath there. Now one question that we've gotten a lot when we've done sweet potato videos in the past, or not really question, but suggestion, is that a lot of people think you have to wait until you get a frost before you harvest your sweet potatoes. And depending on the part of the country that you're in or the climate in your area, that may be true. Now here in Southern Missouri where we are, it's really more important to go by the number of days versus when the first frost is. We've waited in the past for the first frost and what usually happens is our potatoes, whether they're sweet potatoes or even our regular potatoes, if we let them go too long, is that they get filled with bugs. Uh, the bigger they get, I don't know if it's because they get sweeter or just because the amount of time they're in the ground, but the bugs absolutely love them. So we want to get these out of the ground before that happens this year. Although to be honest, we have no idea what's underneath all of these vines. Uh, the vines look great. We've actually harvested some of the leaves because the leaves are edible, but obviously we didn't even make a dent in the number of leaves. We are going to cut these and feed them to the pigs today because these are actually very high in protein. Um, sweet potato leaves can actually be 25 to 30 percent protein, which is actually a really good animal feed. So as we cut these today, we are going to feed them to the pigs. And then we're going to get busy starting to harvest and see if our experiment here with the sweet potatoes was a successful one. Well, like Kevin said, we need to find the dirt basically first. We need to cut these vines back, get them out of the raised bed, pull them out of the greenhouse and take them over to the pigs before we can even start digging for sweet potatoes. So we have quite a bit of work to do. Look at all these crazy vines, you guys. We can't even believe it. 
I think when we originally planted, we put three rows of sweet potato slips in here. So we're hoping we can find kind of the main plants so we're not having to cut, you know, a million different vines. All right, let's get to work. Well, the pigs are going to love having all of these vines to eat. We're gonna load them in the tractor and then we're gonna take some over and feed them up. Hey, Linda. Hey, Donna. How are you guys? Well, the new, the newest pigs that we have, Linda and Donna, are both doing great. You can see that they are growing fast. And I bet they're going to be excited to get some of these vines. Watch out. <laughs> I see what they think of those. Are those yummy? Charlie sounds like he wants some. All right, let's take some to Charlie. He's literally frothing at the mouth looking at him. So I guess that's a sign that he wants some. There you go, Charlie. Are those good? I guess the answer is yes. All right, looks like the girls want some too. Here you go, Ginger. Here you go, Dolly. Thank you. 
Well, these guys have done quite a number already on their pile. This is exactly why I don't want to overdo it all in one day, though, because this is something new for them, and I don't want them to get a bellyache. Now, when I was researching whether or not it would be okay to give these to the pigs, uh, we actually found out that there are countries in the world that are using up to 50% of the animal feed. They're replacing 50% of their normal animal feed with sweet potato, the actual potatoes, and the vines and leaves because it's so high in protein and just so nutritious for them. Now most of the protein is in the actual leaves of the plants and then the potatoes themselves, as you know, if, you've, if you eat sweet potatoes or have researched it, which are very high in vitamins and minerals and just really good for you. So uh, the pigs would benefit from all of it, except we're not gonna share the actual potatoes with them. We're keeping those for ourselves. All right, there's one pig left, that's Myrtle. You may have noticed she's not in any of these pens right now. That's because she's up in one of our farrowing pens because we do think she is getting close to having babies. So let's take the rest of these up to Myrtle and give her a treat and see how she's doing today. Hey, big girl. You look like you're pregnant. I brought you a treat. So those babies grow real good. There you go. I know, those are sweet potatoes. Well, Myrtle is starting to look very pregnant. I really think it's gonna be within the next week or 10 days that she has babies. So well, we are excited to have more piglets on the farm. Um, her, last, her last litter was only five piglets. So we're hoping she'll have a bigger litter this time around, but we'll be happy with whatever we can get from her. She is a good mom. And right now she's a good eater. All right, let's head back to the greenhouse. We need to get these sweet potatoes dug up. Well, it is the moment of truth for us to start digging out these sweet potatoes. The good news is this soil is very loose yeah. So we shouldn't need like shovels or potato forks or anything to dig these out. We should just be able to dig them out by hand. We have no idea what to expect underneath this soil. I mean, there are a couple spots where we can see a couple of sweet potatoes kind of sticking out, which is encouraging. Um, but we really don't know how many to expect. I don't know if I expect, you know, 20 pounds or 200 pounds. We're not gonna know until we start digging. It does look like some of the slips that we planted didn't make it. Uh, we can't really tell how many produced and how many didn't, how many are just hiding sweet potatoes underneath the ground. Uh, so it's just gonna be a matter of digging in and seeing what we get. All right, I think you should do the first plant. Okay. Well, one thing we know is that the skins on the sweet potatoes, when they're in the ground, they're very delicate and they get scratched and bruised easily. So I'm gonna be really careful and try to just uncover those. Ooh, here is one where I'm seeing. I'm just gonna uncover them gently. Wow, that's a nice one. <laughs> that is a very nice one. Just gonna pop that off. That is a winner for sure. Look at how beautiful that is. But, you know, like I said, you need to be careful. Just me brushing off this dirt has kind of scraped the, the skin off. So I'm gonna not do that anymore. No, I think we just let them dry. Yep. So I'm just gonna set that aside and see what else we can find here. I think I'm feeling another one over here, but it could just be roots. Look at this gorgeous soil, you guys. It's just roots that I was finding. Oddly shaped. 
it feels. Hey, that's a nice one. Yeah. I'll take that. This root is leading over here. Oh, there's a potato there. Woo! Look how pretty that color is. These are garnet variety sweet potatoes. Let's see. Oh, it's down in there. That's a big one. Here it comes. Look at that! Nice. Wow! Well, I found a couple more here. This one kind of broke when I was pulling it. And then there's this one under here. So, it looks like from this plant... Just double check over there, okay. So from this one plant, we got this amount of sweet potatoes. And I'm pleased with that. I don't know if that's good or bad, but I'd say that's pretty good. Let's move on to another one. All right, I'm gonna start over here where I can see at least a couple nice ones right here at the surface. I'd say that's a winner. Woo, holy cow. And I'd say this one is, oh, there's more than one here. Look at that. Here's another nice one. Now let's follow some of these roots and see if there's any more. I think when we're all done, I'll probably still come through with a potato fork and really dig this all up and see if there's any that we've missed by hand, but I do agree with Sarah that I think at least initially it's safer to be doing these by hand. I think that one actually came from this next plant. All right, well, it looks like about the same on this plant as the first plant, three really nice ones and then this one smaller one. That may end up being about the average, is just like three really nice potatoes per plant, but that is way better than we did out in the ground, and they're actually like a decent shape. The big problem that we had out in the ground was that they always, because the ground was so hard, they'd grow like really long but really narrow, and those were really hard to use, so these are definitely much better. So we're gonna get busy just trying to dig up everything else that's here, and then we'll let you guys know at the end how many we end up with. Now, this is an area that didn't have a visible plant on up on the ground, but there sweet potatoes. I think there are sweet potatoes under here. Well, here is our harvest. <laughs> you guys, this is probably one of those videos that if we were not committed to showing you guys a true <laughs> picture of the homesteading life, we probably wouldn't be putting out right now because I would not consider this a success at all as far as the amount of time and effort that went into growing these sweet potatoes. Right. So the raised bed is 22 feet long, six feet wide. We had three rows, so about 60 row feet of sweet potato slips. And we weighed these before we brought them out here to you guys, and it's about 24 to 25 pounds of sweet potatoes. Right. 
That uh, is way, way under uh, what I was hoping to get. I thought we'd have 100 pounds, I don't well, know. And based on those crazy vines, you guys, I thought for sure we were just gonna hit it out of the park finally and just grow the heck out of sweet potatoes. Right. But again, this year, I mean, we got way more, honestly, than we've ever grown before out of sweet potatoes. Well, nicer ones, for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely, and, and they really are a blessing. We're gonna just eat these up. We've gotta cure them, uh, but we're just gonna eat these up these, this winter. But by no means did we hit it out of the park this year with sweet potatoes. Right. Now, I do know that a lot of you are going to comment that we really should have waited until the first frost. Um, I'm going to argue that point because last year our first frost was actually October 14th, so we're past that day already. I'm expecting our first frost any day. So I don't think there would have been enough time for these to continue to grow and for the ones that were small to have grown into nice sized potatoes within the next week. I just don't think that was going to happen. That and the fact that some of these are actually already starting to grow eyes or slips off of them tells me we actually probably left them a little too long. They usually recommend 100 to 110 days for sweet potatoes. Today is day 125 for these. And so I just, I, I don't know exactly what the problem was. We had very rich soil, very loose soil, uh, plenty of water. Um, I don't know. Some things that it could be, um, you know, we assumed that because that soil was nice and black, that it was also very rich with nutrients. Uh, we didn't fertilize the entire time. If you look at how many, how many vines and how leafy it was, I mean, it's clear that there was definitely enough nitrogen. Maybe there wasn't enough phosphorus. Maybe there wasn't enough potassium. Uh, we didn't do any soil samples or soil testing of right. that. You know, we also had the shade cloth up and even though we thought we were doing the sweet potatoes, a, you know, a, a favor by not having that really hot sun beating down on it, uh, you know, with the plastic, which would make it even hotter, maybe that took away from the plant's ability to, um, produce the sweet potatoes. You know, all of those are just guesses. We'll right. probably never know why this didn't turn out as good as we had hoped. Um, but if you guys have any suggestions, we're definitely open to always hearing more suggestions. Um, again, you know, this was a raised bed that normally over the summer would just sit empty because that greenhouse gets too hot to grow much of anything else. So it's not like we took away space from anywhere else. This was a good experiment. We still feel very blessed to have the amount of sweet potatoes that we got. I mean, some of them look, I mean, this is an awesome sweet potato. It just isn't as plentiful as we had hoped, but we do still really think that we are blessed to have what we got. So even though we have harvested these sweet potatoes, it doesn't mean that they're just ready to eat. They need to be cured. Uh, if you were to eat these sweet potatoes right now, you would be very disappointed because they're not sweet at all. The first thing that needs to be done is these sweet potatoes need to be kept in a room or a location that has high heat, like 80, 85 degrees and really humid. And they need to uh, cure for like six to 10 days until they're really hard and the, um, the skins are nice and dry. But that's not it either. They need about five or six weeks in 55 to 60 degree climate so that the starches turn into sugars and that's what makes sweet potatoes sweet. So you guys, if you're enjoying our channel, if you enjoy the types of videos that we do and you enjoy seeing successes and failures, uh, I hope that you'll hit that subscribe button before you leave. Don't forget that the absolute best way that you can help us here on our homestead is by sharing our videos across all of your social media so that others can learn as well. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.